woman clad in a gossamer fine silk, the ultra elegant chi pao gown that so accentuates her grace and femininity. It's a sight that universally enchants, sparking reminiscences that span generations. In her novel, Alloswood Incense, the First Brazier, representative writer of Shanghai literature Eileen Chang describes the costume of the maid Ni Ar. It's a white summer blouse and loose black pants made of gambiered Canton gauze, the exotic fabric that Chang, known as the Chi Pao Bell, most favoured. Chi Chiao Town in the Nanhai district of Guangdong's Foshan City is famous for its light textiles, but most of all for the traditionally hand-woven, plant-dyed and finished gambiered canton or watered gauze. It's a fabric that originates here. Watered gauze is available at the Su Liangji Drapery in downtown Foshan. Shop proprietor Xian Da Feng has devoted years to researching watered gauze, which disappeared in the 1970s. Through stringent analysis of salvaged garments made in the 1950s, he rediscovered the raw silk yarn that watered gauze is made from and restored it to the market. The so-called plum rains fall at the end of April when fruit ripens. Xian Da Feng and Zhang Kangzhong, owners of this watered gauze drying factory in Panyu, Guangzhou City, are worried about the imminent change in the weather. Few days between early April and late October bring weather suitable for airing the yarn. The sweltering summer heat embrittles it and there's insufficient sun on rainy days. Shen Da Feng and Zhang Kangzhong are both well aware of the negative impact of these natural factors. Chen Dafeng has just received a call from Luo Yang in Chengdu requesting a batch of watered gauze. But he can't oblige because bad weather has prevented him from sun drying his yarn. Luo Yang is a respected Qi Pao designer in Chengdu. Apprentice to a master Qi Pao tailor shop at age 17, expert guidance and the many insights he gained there have made Luo a consummate couturier. The charm of Chengdu, a city traditionally brimming with vigour, has been enhanced over time by contemporary sartorial and architectural trends. Uh, 
这一块该怎么弄吗？就垫一下就好了，因为你太瘦了。正面这个线条你看上去是不是就不是那么明显？嗯、我这边再给你收的话，你也收的抬不上了。我刚才我就试了一下，因为我手已经伸不上去了。嗯，这个地方到时候垫一下。对，垫一下的话就 OK 了。就是你这边一起来之后，然后这一块就直接就直了，就正面看上去你是腰臀就没了。然后你看这边剪下来，你正面的正面的曲线你看一下，正面曲线是直的了，口红颜色再红一点，然后特别红，对，想怎么红就怎么红。对，配饰的话，其实我觉得耳坠，但是可以稍微夸张一点，带金色或者带彩的都可以。In addition to cutting fabric according to each figure, Luo Yang's cheap out tailoring reflects the times as well as his designing acumen. This is why he's known as Luo Sentai or Triple Treasure Luo. Of the multitudinous cheap out fabrics available on the market, Luo Yang is partial to Four Shan's watered gauze, especially that produced by Xian Da Feng. As they are amid the busiest months of the year, Shan Da Feng and Zhang Kang Zhong must air some watered gauze without delay. While bad weather has delayed the drying process, an even bigger problem is their dwindling supply of the vital dye yams. Forty-one-year-old fisherman Liang Changlin is from Old Tang Village, located along the Upper Xijiang River on the Tropic of Cancer. As dai yams flourish in Old Tang's diverse climate, terrain, and hidden woods, he can keep Zhang Kangzhong's gauze drying factory supplied with them all year round. During the closed fishing season, he and his team go to the mountain to dig yams. The dye yam is an essential dye stuff for watered gauze. Commonly found in Guangdong and Guangxi, it's a perennial twining vine with tannin-rich tubers similar to the taro. After scything a narrow path along the mountain's contours, Liang Changlin and his fellow villagers find an untrodden area deep in the distant forest. Spying the largest dai yam they've seen this year under a thicket of weeds, he and his team start digging it up.
Ling Jumei is the only woman among them. This seemingly effortless digging work is actually a punishing test of physical strength and endurance. But she appreciates the money it earns for her family. Young Chung Lin and his team must carry the 500 or so kilos of diams, the five kilometers to the foot of the mountain by nightfall. They are to be shipped downriver to Zhang Kangjong's factory on the lower reaches of the Xijiang River. Zhang Kangjong and his workers must shred and soak the dai yams with all possible speed. Workers pour the dye yam juice into the water tank and then add the raw silk yarn. After making sure the juice has saturated and stained every inch of it, they hoist it up and let it drain off. After naturally dehydrating, the fabric is then taken to the air drying yard. <laughs> The drying yard is a well-maintained manicured flat lawn. The stained gauze is spread out, pulled taut and laid flat to be sun-dried. Most of the workers here are from Nanning in Guangxi. They sleep and eat at the factory, and they carry out this established work routine every day. meal times for workers here and they're content to eat plain fare. <laughs> In the end, the rain that Xian Dafeng and Zhang Kangjong so dreaded doesn't come.
They think themselves lucky to have been able to dry such a large quantity of gauze at its preliminary stage. The weather in Chengdu is pleasant at this time of year with much less rain than Guangzhou. Today, an honored guest from afar enters Luoyang's cheap house studio. She is Ikuko Sugita, a famous Japanese breeder of the American short-haired cat. Admiration for Luoyang's reputation prompted her to order a Chinese-style chipao in watered gauze. Ikuko Sugita intends to wear the made-to-measure chipao next year at an awards ceremony. A cheap owl tailored in watered gauze ingeniously integrates elegance and glamour. One of nature's surprises, the fabric owes much to the painstaking watered gauze production procedure. It's 4 a.m. when Xian Dafeng arrives at the factory and dozens of workers are already locked in the busy rhythm of spreading dredged river mud over the silk yarn. The mud contains iron that reacts with the accumulated tannins on the yarn's dried surface. After a second airing, the mud is washed away, leaving the sun-dried side a deep shade of black. Qian Dafeng gives the fabric pride of place in his Su Liangji. No two pieces of watered gauze are alike, but this isn't important. What matters is that someone is fashioning it into a qi pao. 
我觉得这种情况的话，就好像是我是面料和客人之间的月老，然后他们有一定的缘分了之后，我把那条红线拴在一起，同时给他打了一个很漂亮的结。But Yang balances the femininely fine stitching required of his profession with overtly masculine hobbies. Luo Yang would never make a chi bao with a hem ending above the knee, but he does lift the waistline of a long chi bao to create for its wearer a graceful vase-like curve. The side openings start from the tip of the middle finger. They subtly flatter in appropriate degrees the innate grace and beauty of Oriental women. Excels at both designing chi pao and understanding women. To him, a woman's greater susceptibility to her emotions gives her a better perception of life. This is reflected in both her attitude and style of living, which enriches the chi pao with a distinct vitality. Today, Four Shan watered gauze is exported to the world from Shan Dafeng's Su Liangji. On a wall in his shop hangs the motto, the lifespan of fabrics depends on the story they carry. May they ever accompany us through time. Having revitalized the complex watered gauze process, this is the conclusion Shan Dafeng has reached. 但现在呢，我们的市场呢也开始呢，有人呢就模仿这种风格，但是并不是用绞杀去制造的，很内行的人才知道。所以，如果保护一种传统和传统产品，还是应该让它真实的面貌让大家。